Yeah, good morning students. In this video, I will be discussing on packet switching. So before watching this video, I recommend you first to watch uh, my previous videos that is what is uh, circuit switching and uh, what is message switching. Then you come to this video. So the link for the previous videos is available in the description box. So first you watch those two videos and then come back to packet switching. So normally this packet switching works in the data link and network layer. So in packet switching, the message is divided into packets, which is of fixed or variable size. It purely depends upon the, the maximum segment size of the next node. So based upon the receiving capacity of the next node, the packets will be divided either uh, fixed or variable. And this size of the packet, as I told you, is determined by the network and also the protocol based upon the uh, MSS. So here, lack of reservation may create a delay because uh, we are not uh, creating any leased path here. There is no fixed path. The resources are not reserved. All the resources are allocated on demand. So when compared to uh, message switching and circuit switching we have seen there is a uh, fixed path in circuit switching we have seen like uh, before transmitting the data uh, first we need to uh, fix the path then all the uh, messages will move in the same direction but here each packet may move in its own direction there is no resource allocation due to that there may be more delay and as I told you, there is no resource reservation. Uh, all the resources are allocated on demand. So based upon the traffic or based upon the cost, the switch will decide uh, which direction the data has to pull. So we have two types of uh, packet switching. One is datagram switching. The other one is the virtual circuit switching networks. So coming to datagram switching, uh, these are all few uh, points we need to note down. The messages that passes through a packet switch network, as I told you, it will be divided into fragments called packets, which is of fixed or variable size. And this size of the packets, as I already told you, is determined by the network and also the governing protocol. So as I told you already, the datagram switching is normally uh, works on a network layer. There is no resource allocation for a packet. All the resources are allocated on demand and this resource allocation is purely done on first come first serve basis there is no any reservation and in a datagram network each packet is uh, treated independent and uh, each packet can move in its own direction it is purely connectionless so normally the packets in this approach we referred as a datagrams because here we are using the UDP protocol which is connectionless uh, so the name is datagrams because user datagram protocol will normally we are using the terminology as datagrams. So this is one uh, semantic diagram uh, where you can see clearly uh, the host A is sending some data to host P or X uh, where the data is divided into uh, datagrams means smaller fragments. So there are four uh, datagrams they have named it as sequence number 1, 2, 3 and 4. So you can see clearly here this switch has transferred the data uh, that is uh, fragment number 1 and 3 in this direction, 2 is in this direction and 4 is in this direction. So as I already told you the pack, uh, datagrams can move in its own direction. So and we can't give guarantee that which uh, uh, datagram will come first and which datagram will go next at the receiver side. So if you see at the receiver side you can see clearly. Uh, datagram 1 has come first, 4 has come next, 3 has come next, and 2 has net come, uh, next come next. So there is no uh, sequence of flow. So we need to rearrange those uh, uh, datagrams at the receiver side using some CRC techniques. So that's what we can say that uh, uh, datagram switching may be speed. It may be having good speed, but uh, it is not that much reliable. Okay. And normally in a datagram switching, uh, each switch uh, will maintain one routing table. Uh, this is the uh, routing table fields uh, that will contain 
uh, what is known as a destination address and also the output port. So it specifies two things uh, to where the node has to go that is what the destination address and the switch should use which port in order to reach the respective destination. So if you see here uh, if the port the switch is using is 1 then it can move to destination node 1, 2, 3, 2 or address. If it uses the output port number 2 then it reaches to the destination address 4150. So in that way uh, each switch will maintain a routing table or a forwarding table that contains two fields one is the destination address the other one is the output port. Okay. And here I have given one more point these routing tables are uh, dynamic and they have to uh, update periodically. So once if any routing table is updated then that data should be uh, broadcasted to its neighboring nodes in order to update their routing tables. Okay. So as I told you every packet in a datagram will carry two things in the header one is known as the destination address and some control information will be there. So this destination address is very very important. So based upon that destination address the switch will decide uh, which port number that is the output port it needs to use in order to reach that destination as I have shown in the previous diagram. So here you can see. So based upon the destination address only the switch will identify uh, which output port it needs to use in order to reach to that destination. And the coming to delay, so the delay will be more in datagram switching when compared to uh, virtual circuit switching uh, because uh, each packet will move in its own direction and also uh, there is a waiting time in each switch because each switch should uh, uh, store the data in order to identify which is its next uh, route to forward. So because of that it may take some longer time uh, where it has to wait for that. So here you can see clearly uh, the node A is transmitting the data to node B with the two intermediate switches uh, and as I already told you this is the uh, time taken to transfer the first bit from A to switch 1 which is known as uh, the propagation time tau we can call it as and this is the total message that is transferred that contains all the bits that we call it as the transmission time. So the total time taken to transmit the data from A to switch 1 is tau plus t means the time taken to transmit the single bit and also the time taken to transmit all the bits in the message. That's what we can say uh, the propagation time plus transmission time. So switch 1 will take some time to analyze which is its next uh, uh, switch to forward or direction to forward and then again it starts the same thing. Uh, it transfers the first bit and also the time taken to transfer all the bits that is nothing but a tau plus t. Again it will wait uh, a specific amount of time uh, to identify which is the next node and finally it reaches the destination the first bit and the last bit. So that is the propagation time and transmission time. So the total time taken is t plus tau plus t tau plus t plus tau plus t which is nothing but 3 tau plus 3t and also here you can see every switch is taking some waiting time uh, that is nothing but a w1 and here waiting time w2. So w1 plus w2. So this is the total delay uh, the data gram switching will takes in order to transfer the data from uh, source to destination if there are two intermediate switches. The total delay is 3 tau plus 3 t plus w1 plus w2. So if there are four uh, three intermediate uh, switches then it may take 4 tau plus 4 t plus w1 plus w2 plus w3. So this is the uh, delay that is taken uh, in the datagram switching. Okay. And coming to virtual circuit switching, uh, the only difference between circuit switching and virtual circuit switching is both are connection oriented but when it comes to circuit switching once the connection is established between source and destination so that is the physical path. So if somewhere the data is uh, or the link is broken so there is no dynamic change of the route because here the route is source initiated. So if it wants any new direction or new path then it has to go to the source from there the new path will be established. Whereas in the case of virtual circuit uh, network uh, that uh, uh, what we call that uh, wastage of time is not there. In case if uh, somewhere the link is broken immediately uh, the route can be dynamically established from the uh, same uh, switch from, from where the link has been broken with the help of VCIs. We call it as virtual circuit identifiers. Uh, 
Uh, coming to virtual circuit switching, there are two types of addresses involved. One is known as a global address, the other one is the uh, local address. Uh, global address uh, is unique and uh, it is having scope within the entire network. So we are not bothered much about this global address here. So very important is we need to uh, know more important about VCI, virtual circuit identifier. So this identifier is mainly used in order to uh, transfer the data and also to establish the connection. Uh, the uh, virtual circuit identifier will have the scope within a switch. Please keep in mind, global address will have the scope within the complete network, whereas uh, VCI will have the uh, scope within the switch. So each switch will have uh, its own uh, VCIs. Uh, here you can see the virtual circuit identifiers. Uh, for example, uh, if you take any data, uh, it will contain two things, the data field, one is known as the, the datagram will have two fields, one is known as data, the other one is the uh, VCI, that is virtual circuit identifier. So here uh, the switch will identify which is the uh, VCI it is getting in, this is known as incoming VCI and this you can see the outgoing VCI from where the data is moving. So here is the uh, best example, this is the router or a switch. So here two datagrams are moving with their own VCI, uh, data with VCI 77 and data with VCI 14. Uh, to differentiate between these two datagrams, we are using some colors, a uh, white color datagram and also blue color. Uh, in blue color, blue color you can see the identifier is a 14 VCI. So it is entering with the port number 1. Okay, That's what here the entry is there, port number 1, uh, the data 14 is entering with the VCI. Uh, 14 and it is going out you can see the same color with the port number 3 that is the output port is 3 and its VCI is 22 that is the outgoing VCI. So the outgoing VCI is nothing but uh, the port that is chosen to move to the next uh, switch where it can reach the destination. Uh, similarly you can see one more data with the uh, uh, VCI 77 it is also entering with the same port 1 with the incoming VCI 77 and it is going out with the port number 2 with the outgoing VCI 41. So this is how uh, the routing table will be updated in the uh, switch in case of virtual circuit switching. So we will take one example here. So normally in the virtual circuit switching uh, there will be three phases or three stages what you can say. One is known as a connection setup phase, the other one is data transfer phase and the lastly we have tear down phase. So connection setup phase is a must before transmitting the data. Once the connection is established, then you can transfer the data. Once the data transmission is completed, then you need to close the connection. So normally we are using uh, VCIs in order to uh, set up the connection. So that we will see in the next slide. So as I told you in the setup phase, normally uh, the source and destination use their uh, global addresses uh, in the switch to make the entry for each and every routing table to establish the connection. So as I told you in the setup phase, a switch creates an entry for each virtual circuit. Suppose if source A wants to uh, create a connection to the source B, then uh, first they need to enter into the setup phase or setup request. Once the request is completed, then uh, the acknowledgement from the destination side is completed, then a connection will be established between the source and the destination with the n number of switches with their routing tables. Okay, That I can show here, the connection setup how it happens. Uh, here you can see, this is the setup request and also the acknowledgement uh, phase. Uh, here you can see the node A is transmitting data to node B. Uh, normally each switch will maintain its own routing table or a forwarding table. Uh, the data A is coming with the VCI 14. So imagine. So it is coming with the port number 1 and its incoming VCI is 14. And output port is 3 but right now it will be down, not known which is the uh, outgoing VCI because uh, uh, the destination is somewhere here. So this destination should inform to its previous uh, switch using its VCI. Then this switch 3 should inform to switch 2, please use my VCA to reach to the destination. Similarly, switch 2 should inform to switch where you can use my input VCA to reach to destination. So the connection 
uh, should establish from the back end that outgoing vci what i meant to say starting only three fields will be filled incoming vci incoming port and outgoing vci outgoing uh, sir outgoing port outgoing vci will right now it is empty so the data will come here to this uh, switch uh, with its own vci uh, that is uh, 66 so the in input port is 1 incoming vci is 66 output port is 2 and outgoing we say right now we don't know so it go to switch 3 now switch 3 is getting data from which port 2 with an vci of 22 so this vci may be anything because uh, each data will have its own vci so incoming vci what you to say so here it is uh, entering with the port number 2 its incoming vci is 22 and it is going the data outside with the port number 3 and right now it doesn't know what is the outgoing vci then the data will reach to destination so this is not uh, this is just a set of phase please keep in mind i am not talking about data it is a set of phase so once it comes to b that is the destination then b will tell to switch 3 you can use my incoming vci 77 so that you can re you can get a connection to me so now what it will do this incoming vci 77 will be updated as the outgoing vci to the previous switch so switch 3 will update now 77 if i use the outgoing vci 77 which is nothing but incoming vci to the b so then i can reach to destination similarly what uh, uh, switch 3 will do it will tell to switch 2 please use my incoming vci 22 so that i will forward your data to destination then the incoming vci 22 is updated as outgoing vci to the previous switch similarly switch 2 will tell to switch 1 uh, please use my incoming VCA 66 so that uh, the data can be forwarded to destination via switch 3. So the incoming VCA of switch 2 is what? 66. So that will become the outgoing VCA of the switch 1. Please keep one point in mind here. Uh, the outgoing VCI of any switch or switch 1 is nothing but incoming VCA of the next switch. Similarly, the outgoing VCA of the switch 2 is nothing but incoming we say of the next switch so that you should keep in mind so once it is done then uh, the uh, forwarding table or a routing table is updated with outgoing we say for all the uh, switches so using that to outgoing we say now the data will be transferred so this is how uh, a setup is established between the uh, node a to b so this is what is happening now all the outgoing we says will be updated so once it is done then the uh, acknowledgement will also come back 77, 22 and 66 so with the connection so once the setup is completed then the real data will transfer with the help of uh, this routing table ok so now the data is transferred with 66, 22 and 77 and the original data so the routing table will be updated as it is so once the data transmission is completed, please keep one thing in mind, the connection need to be closed, means you need to call what is known as teardown phase. Once the teardown phase is called, then automatically uh, all the entries in the routing table will be deleted. If you don't call the teardown phase, then what happens, uh, these uh, link or a path that is established will be uh, dedicated between A and B for lifetime. So in order to avoid that. Uh, the link needs to be closed where uh, you are going to call the teardown phase okay so once the data transmission is completed as i told you uh, source a after sending all the frames to b it sends a special frame called the teardown request so destination b what it will do now it will respond with the tear teardown confirmation frame uh, indirectly telling that please delete all your routing tables that are uh, established the connection from b to a so once that teardown connection confirmation is uh, transferred in a backward from uh, node B to A, then all the uh, switches that are connected in that path will be uh, deleting the routing table. Okay. So this is how the connection is closed. And what is the total delay in this virtual circuit? So it is nothing but the time taken uh, to establish the connection, that is what the setup is and the time taken to transfer the data but however there is no waiting time between each and every switch because virtually uh, the path is created so once the data transmission is completed 
and the last step is we need to close the connection so this is the total delay the time taken to uh, set up the phase the time taken to transfer the data and lastly the time taken to close the connection so this is how uh, the packet switching will work so hope so you enjoyed the video thanks for watching and subscribe our youtube channel for more videos bye